I thought I'd try something different today and I think some of you are really gonna like it. Some of you are probably gonna think, what the hell am I doing? If you've been following this channel for a while, you know that I was building up to a kickboxing fight in June, which I won. But ever since then, my training has fallen into a bit of a rut. I was training a bit less because I had some personal things that I was working on and I also just had less of a clear idea about what my goal should be with my training. For all those reasons, I've decided to try something a little bit different. Now, outside of the gym, one of the things I enjoy most in my free time is gaming. I have a PlayStation 5 and I play lots of different games, but one game that I spend quite a bit of time on, which some of you may have heard of, is a game called Fortnite. So I decided to create the Fortnite Workout. So in Fortnite, you play online with about 100 other people per game, and you all run around this map and you try to kill each other and survive till the end of the game. What this means is that when you die in Fortnite, you're given a number from one to 100 based on what position you were when you died. So if you are the 50th person to die, your number is 50. If you're the first person to die, your number is 100. And if you are the last person, if you survive to the very end of the game, then your number is one, your first place. So I decided what I would do is I would play seven games of Fortnite and give myself seven numbers based on my performance in each game. What I would then do is pick exercises out of a hat, or in this case, a bowl, and I would apply one of those numbers to each exercise that I chose. At the end of seven rounds of Fortnite, I should have a pretty well-rounded workout plan. With all that being said, let's move on to some rules. To keep things interested, I'm going to have a bowl of exercises for the lower numbers for heavier rep exercises, and I'm gonna have a bowl for the lighter exercises that are best performed for higher reps as well. Some exercises will be in both bowls, things like squats, bench press, deadlifts, and so on, that might suit themselves well to heavy reps and to lighter reps if they're performed accordingly. Now, the aim for these workouts is that intensity will match the numbers given. So if I did get number one in one of my games and I chose an exercise for one rep, it would have to be a one rep maximum. If I get the number 70, for example, then I'm going to try and match intensity to 70 reps so that by the end of 70 reps, it is a hard challenge rather than choosing a really lightweight that I could do for reps and reps and reps that would be easy. Don't forget to like and subscribe, share this video with your friends, whether they're your friends that you play Fortnite with or your friends that you go to the gym with. If this video is popular, then I'm probably gonna start another channel to focus on this more fun stuff and keep my Ready Steady Strong channel a bit more serious. So definitely subscribe so you can stay up to date with the new channel if that happens. You can also feel free to suggest exercises for me to put in my exercise bowls and you can suggest Fortnite-based challenges as well, things that I need to try and do in the game, maybe certain weapons I need to use or places I need to go to in order to make those challenges really interesting. So first things first, apologies for the change in video quality here. I made some changes with my video files and I fixed that now. So next video, this will be nice and crisp. I like to land on this little island near Steamy Springs because there's always lots of loot here and there's always someone else who lands here. So you've got to make sure you grab a weapon quickly and go and kill them as soon as you can. Luckily, this player was still looting and uh, they also fell into the water because I was throwing grenades at them. So I was able to kill them without them really offering much resistance back. Then I carried on looting here and I was able to move on. This was back when grapple gloves were still in the game and I was able to find one of those so that I could zip around and move on to my next location nice and quickly. I got some more loot and I found some firefly drives which may have set this building on fire. I do quite like to set buildings on fire even though it serves no purpose in the game. Then I found a gold drum shotgun which was one of the best weapons in the game at the time so I was really happy about that and I carried on grappling around trying to find someone to use it on. Once I did that, I was able to find this golden cache and try and recover that. I always find that a little bit risky because it gives away your location to other players and you have to wait. But I felt pretty confident with my loadout and I decided I was gonna blow up a petrol station because again, I like setting things on fire in this game. I got some slurp juice and then I moved on a little bit further and got the attention of this dinosaur, which as you know, they follow you for ages in this game. It gets a bit annoying. So I did the only thing I could think of, which was to run it over. Eventually Loot Island appeared and I decided I would fly over there and try and go to that. I always feel like it's quite risky as it attracts quite aggressive players, but some of the people that I play for now wave always like going there. So I've got into the habit of going there. I decided to hide in this bush to see if anyone else would turn up and I ambushed someone and killed them. Then I got attacked by someone else and I managed to just about kill them as well. And then I was finally killed off by someone else who had turned up as well. So I finished 16th in my first game. Game two started with me heading to one of the sanctuaries. I quite like the sanctuaries in Fortnite because anywhere where you land on a high building, I like to think that you're falling for less time so you can get started quicker. I don't know if that's 100% true or not. That's certainly how it feels. So I was able to loot up and get my shields quite early. 
And then I had some Firefly Jars, so of course, the only reasonable thing to do with those is to set fire to the building. Because I do like to do that in these games. I did nearly set myself on fire though, so that wasn't too clever of me. I did manage to get another gold drum shotgun though, so I was very happy about that. And again, I was very eager to use that on someone. So I traveled around a little bit and eventually found someone and used it on them. I then rode around on a motorbike for a little bit and I eventually came and blew up this petrol station because of course I did. Then a little bit later I found a car and as I was driving around in that I found two other people fighting and I decided I would kind of butt in on their fun and try and kill them. I try and do that quite a lot. I'm a little bit of a vulture so if I see two other people fighting I'll try and jump in and, and get involved in that. But I was able to find the key card for this vault over here so I decided to use that. And then I thought it was pretty likely that as I opened the door, the other person was going to come and ambush me. So I decided to try and do that to them instead. I eventually managed to kill this person and take all the loot from the vault, including some more slurp juice, which uh, I always like to try and get slurp juice in the game if I can, because it does heal you quite a lot. So at this point in the game, I was feeling pretty good. I had two legendary weapons and some slurp juice, and I came out of the uh, vault and I was pretty much murdered straight away by this frozen peeling. So my second game finished with me in 21st place. So in my third game, I decided to land in Frenzy Field. I normally don't like doing this because it's quite busy and I tend to die quite early on, but I thought it was worth a try. I didn't have great weapons, so I came over towards these houses to try and find some more and I came across this person in the building. I thought I could try and trap them in the building and kill them, but this ended up being way harder than I thought it was going to be because this person had some shockwave grenades and they were able to launch themselves out of the house while I was reloading my gun. I tried to chase them a little bit more, but they just did the same thing again and escaped. Moving on, I tried to claim the flag at Frenzy Fields using some bushes for cover, but someone saw right through my hiding place and managed to start attacking me. I tried running away and hiding, but I got a little bit greedy and uh, decided to try and attack them from ambush. And I was not equipped with that and I died. So my third game ended in 65th place and I'm not feeling particularly good about doing 65 reps of anything. Game number four, I went back to a sanctuary and started looting up there. I didn't get great loot, but I found a car and found this person to fight kind of near the middle of the map. I don't really know what this area is called, but I decided to run them over and then finish them off. Then I was finally able to get some slightly better loot. A little while later, I found myself back at Frenzy Field, and although I was scarred from my last game, I decided to try and take the flag again. But you can tell how paranoid I was because I was constantly moving, constantly checking every doorway, expecting to get shot again. But eventually I claimed that and then moved on because there wasn't much great loot there and then I found a grapple glove which meant I had some firefly jars to get rid of. Then I was just swinging through the jungle, minding my own business and I saw this guy just completely get sniped without me even seeing where the shot came from. So I was pretty paranoid and I was running around trying to find the person who did it and also trying to hide. Eventually I found this guy and killed him but he nearly killed me so I had to desperately try and heal up in time because I still thought there was someone else around. I just about reloaded and got some of my health back and I instantly got attacked by this other guy so I decided to use the car for a cover a little bit and then I just about managed to kill that person as well. I found some slurp juice off that guy and then I went to the island to try and claim that flag again. Decided to dance while I was doing that so if you know what dance this is leave your answer in the comments and then while I was waiting I got attacked by someone else again. I should have swapped to a long range weapon but I thought the drum shotgun would save the day. Unfortunately I died this time in 13th place and in the second game where I got killed by Fry from Futurama. Game five I think now and I decided to land at the Citadel again. Another place I like to land because it is quite high up which means you can land quite early. I then decided I would claim the flag in the main Citadel building and while I was doing that I got attacked again. This was actually one of the first times in the game that I actually killed someone with the boomerang. Then I moved on and eventually I found this person, tried killing them from really far away. But when that didn't work, I had to go up close to finish the job. After this, I did some more looting. I found a, uh, a purple explosive rifle, which is one of my favorite ones in the game. And I found some firefly jars. So once again, you know what happened. Then I moved on again and I found a cache being opened. So I thought I would go and interrupt that person opening it, doing my usual vulture stuff. However, when I got there, I found that the person opening the cache was using a guff skin. Now, for some reason, I really don't like the guff skin. I think when I was early on in Fortnite, I died to people using this skin a lot. So I was determined to kill this character. So I was feeling pretty confident at this point. I had lots of slurp juice and I managed to take this person out from really far away. But instantly someone started attacking me and I had to run for cover. I managed to hide and drink some slurp juice and because that heals you slowly over time I thought I was feeling pretty confident to go and get some revenge on the person that was shooting me. However this turned out to be a mistake because although it started well they did eventually get the better of me. I think they had a bot with them as well. 
However, luckily I did get the last laugh because once they killed me, they were instantly blown up themselves. So this game ended with me in 14th place. Game number six, I think this was quite a short one. I landed somewhere I never normally land, which is Breakwater Bay, which is at the very end of the map. And I decided to start looting and getting my shields as usual. I found someone claiming the flag here and I was able to kill them quite quickly. I finished claiming the point, but I was pretty sure someone else was nearby, so I was on the lookout for them. I felt pretty confident about taking them out because I had some grenades and my explosive repeater rifle, but that didn't really go to plan, as you'll see. I normally do quite well with long range weapons, but it does mean that I occasionally get a little bit cocky and think I can just take people out without really uh, moving or being defensive. And this guy got the better of me because of that. And of course this meant I ended up with a really high rep exercise. I got 70th place, which means I've got to do 70 reps and wait until you see what I chose as my 70 rep exercise. Game number seven, and after that performance, I decided to go back to my lovely little island, my favorite island in the game. Nothing much going on there, so I moved on and carried on looting as I went. Claimed the flag here because you always get some good loot from this. Claiming a flag also reveals nearby chests and enemies to you. I'm sure you know that if you're someone that plays the game, which you probably are if you're watching this video. But this did reveal a nearby enemy to me, so I decided to go and pay them a visit. I feel a bit bad because they were just running into a wall before I came and found them, so I'm not sure what they were up to. I moved on and found a gold explosive repeater rifle, which I was very happy about, and then I found this person and killed them. I then went and upgraded some weapons and ran around Mega City for a bit until I found some people indoors, decided to fight them and kill them. I kept nearly blowing myself up by using the explosive repeater rifle indoors, and then I found the person who was bothering me and decided to kill them as well. Mega City always makes me nervous because there's always lots of people hiding in buildings and I'm not good at finding people, so I eventually moved on. I can never remember the name of this place, but I decided to come here and there was some people attacking me straight away, so I had to run away from those and heal up before I could come back. I kept trying to take this person on at long distance, but no matter what I tried, I just couldn't get the win, so I decided to try getting higher ground instead. Eventually I got to higher ground and they started to try and come and attack me on the zip wire, which is always a bad idea because you're stuck in place and I managed to kill them. I decided to keep my high ground for a while and loot up, because usually there's always people around here. Eventually this guy turned up and I decided to try and kill him. He actually nearly killed me with the Cybertron cannon before I was able to kill him. I think they actually blew themselves up with the Cybertron cannon as well because they completely destroyed that tree. I then went back to Loot Island again because I really wanted Slurp Juice. I was playing cat and mouse with this player for a while because they were on the roof of the building. I should have just left it, but I really wanted that Slurp Juice. So after a little while back and forth, they did eventually kill me. And that meant that my final game ended with me in ninth place. So this meant that my reps for my workout were 16, 21, 65, 13, 70, 9 and 14. As I mentioned, I was going to use one bowl for heavier exercises or 15 reps or less, and then one for 15 to 100 reps. This workout was looking to be pretty evenly split between the two, although there was nothing really that I would consider really low rep heavy work, which I was a bit gutted about. This left me with a really nasty workout of nine clean and jerks, 13 squats, 14 overhead press, 16 jerks, 21 tricep presses, 65 band pull aparts, and 70 reps of squat to press. In a nutshell, I was gonna have to do a lot of squatting and a lot of overhead work, which are two of my weakest areas. Goody gumdrops. It's important to note that this is not the most effective way to train long-term. You'll get much better results in training if you follow a consistent workout for a long period of time rather than doing these random training sessions. This is just intended as a bit of fun to shake up my training and I'm probably only going to do these about once a month. You should always follow workouts that are tailored to you and you should pay attention to the other videos in my channel if you want more advice with doing that. Whenever you train at high intensity with exercises that have been chosen randomly, there is an element of risk because your body is less familiar to those stresses. So I will always do a trial workout of these exercises to work out what weights feel sensible for the numbers that I've been given. I'll also only do this kind of training about once a month, so I have time to recover and do regular structure training in between each one of these workouts. Make sure you consult a health and fitness professional and maybe even a doctor if you intend on following any of these kind of workouts. With all that covered, let's get started. So here we are, we're ready to do the workout. I'm about as enthusiastic as I probably look. 
This really is a different kind of workout style for me. It's not what I'm used to, so I am a bit nervous about doing this. I'm sure there are people out there online who would absolutely destroy this workout in a couple of seconds, but I'm probably a better Fortnite player than them. Actually, I'm probably not. Once again, thank you for watching this video. If you still are, be sure to let me know either by liking, commenting, or subscribing. If this video does okay, then I'll probably do one of these every couple of months on the channel, just something that's a little bit different from my usual content. If it does really well and gets a good response, I'll probably make another YouTube channel for this kind of content, just so it can find its own audience. And if it does really badly, we'll probably never speak about it ever again. So I'm going to start warming up now and I'm gonna put my weightlifting shoes on, which helped me get deeper into my squats and cleans. And I'm gonna have a little bit of wrist support today as well, because there is a lot of overhead pressing. I'm expecting the cardio side of things to be really hard with today's workout, because that's something I haven't done since my fight. So my heart rate really hasn't been that high since I finished training for my fight in June. And the weightlifting side of things might be okay, although I haven't done a lot of that lately either. So I could still be quite sore in the legs, shoulders and arms as well. Because I'm a tall lifter and I also am a pretty weak squatter, there's not much point me going from the floor each time with my clean. So I'm going to be going from just above the knee. I'm going to drop down into the bottom of each squat and then launch the bar overhead for the jerk. Seven. That's nine reps. That was exactly as horrible as I thought it was gonna be. I struggle with a clean and jerk quite a lot because I'm a terrible squatter and don't have much strength in the legs. So with that in mind, let's go on to some squats. So because I hate squats so much and I haven't done full range squats in a little while, I originally tested 60 kilos for about eight reps in my practice session, and that actually felt surprisingly okay. So I've got to do 13 reps now, and I'm actually gonna to increase to 65 kilos. Let's go for it. Nine. Lovely. So now it's time for a shoulder press and it is 14 reps. And for that, I'm gonna try 30 kilos. Okay, so that's one that maybe I underestimated myself on a little bit. That was actually a little bit easier, although I'm sure it doesn't look easy. I was never in any doubt that I could get the full 14 there. So if I were writing a program for myself based around shoulder press, I would definitely want to try a heavier weight for this next week. 13. Okay, so now we've got 16 reps of the jerk. This is the overhead portion of the very first exercise you taught me to do. So this is a little bit weird to be doing this again. And this is gonna be quite tough probably because the legs and shoulders are both a little bit taxed now. That being said, I've gone back to 55 kilos for this. I still think I'll be able to manage 16 reps at 55 kilos. Let's find out. That was eight. I definitely misjudged how much power I would have lost by this point. That was hard from rep number one. I'm gonna take a breather and then go for eight more.
That's 12. Four more to go. And a very messy number 16. Oh. You can see how much that has battered my collarbones. That's how you can tell I haven't done it for a while because my collarbones are nice and fresh. You can limit the amount of bruising to the collarbones by lowering the weight under a bit more control, but obviously that's a lot easier when you're not completely exhausted already. That's a lot of the heavier work out of the way now. That doesn't mean the second half is gonna be easy, but it just means we're into kind of real high rep territory now. And the next exercise is a cable tricep press. I have no idea what kind of weight works well for this because every cable machine is different. So I'm gonna have a quick guess. If I get to 10 reps and it's super easy, then um, I will stop and increase the weight. So I'm meant to be aiming for 21 reps. I can't remember if I said that already. But yeah, 21 reps is the aim, so we'll see what 10 reps feels like. It should be starting to get very slightly burny by 10 reps if I wanna get the full 21 reps. So we'll see. Nine, 10, this is definitely the right weight. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 19, 20, 21. That was quite painful, but compared to the big movements we've been doing so far, it's a very local burn in the arms rather than being completely exhausted. So compared to that work, it feels like a bit of a break, to be honest, but it was definitely not easy. Moving on to band pull parts now. Anything with a band, it's pretty good for high reps because you can just constantly customize your hand position to make it easier if you start to burn out. So I'm gonna go for the uh, 65 reps, I think it is. Just pulling apart the band with straight arms. This is the most embarrassing thing to hit failure on. Right, that just leaves us with 70 reps to go on the squat to press, which after lots of squats, lots of overhead work, a bit of tricep work and a bit of other shoulder work, squat to press is gonna be absolutely horrible. When I did a practice run, I did 30 reps with a 20 kilo bar, which is just the empty bar, and 30 reps nearly killed me. So I'm not even gonna mess around. I'm gonna go down to the 15 kilo bar and there's no way I'm gonna do 70 all in one go. So I'm gonna break this down into sets of 20. And uh, as with everything else, I'll try and take as little break in between each one as I go, each group of 20. Yeah, you can tell I'm getting tired.
Ten to go. I'm even having trouble moving the tripod now. So, that's fun. So that's the workout done. I, uh, I drew the exercises out of the bowl maybe about 10 days ago. So I've been dreading this workout for a while, but uh, I'm glad I got through it. I'm glad I tried it. But will I ever do it again? No, definitely not. Thank you again if you watched all the way to the end. I'm not really sure if I have the on-screen charisma to make this kind of video work long-term, um, but it's been fun to try it. It's been fun to show some of my hobbies as well as just gym stuff. So if you do enjoy that, just make sure you like, comment, subscribe, send me any other exercises you want me to include or any Fortnite challenges you want me to do while I'm playing the seven games. And uh, yeah, hopefully next time I'll come first place in a game of Fortnite and that way I can do some low rep maxing out work. That'll be a nice change from today's session. And remember, these kind of workouts like the one I did today, you only get to do those kind of workouts by following a real structured training program for the majority of the time. Anyone you see doing these kind of workouts through CrossFit or anything like that, chances are when they're not doing a competition, they are spending their time doing sensible structured program. They're not destroying themselves for every session despite what you might see on their YouTube or their Instagram or anything like that. This kind of workout is an expression of the strength and the abilities that you gain in your normal sensible training sessions. So hopefully you learned something, hopefully you enjoy the video, do all the YouTube stuff, and uh, wish me luck for tomorrow. Hopefully I'm not gonna be too sore. See you next time.